So with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 or Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, it, it gets confusing. Right around the corner, dropping on February 18th of Friday, I figured why not take a look back at the original 1974 horror classic and try and figure out what happened to that film's final girl. Sally Hardesty, who will now be making an appearance in the 2022 sequel to the 1974 film, now played by Olin Fowery, who stepped up to take the role since the original actress Marilyn Burns, who played Sally back in 1974, sat Sadly passed away in 2014, but in 1974, when all was said and done and Sally just barely escaped Leatherface and got to ride away into the sunset as the final girl, that was the last time, last time we ever saw her. Kinda. Let me explain. So in 1974, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre won, Sally left the screen when she escaped from Leatherface, but that wasn't the last time we would see her. In Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, it is said in the opening narration that she died in a mental institution or a private healthcare facility in 1977, but she is also supposedly has an uncredited cameo in Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation when she is seen being rolled away in a gurney and is asked by the worker if she knows that film's final girl since she looks at her as she's being rolled away but is unresponsive as the worker asks her if she does know that film's final girl and he says what the hell is going on around here which i gotta admit i definitely would be asking that question too if i was in that same exact situation now this could be the same mental institution or private healthcare facility that sally does in fact die in in 1977 or maybe they threw away the idea in complete total that she dies and brought her back to life and maybe She's just in shock realizing that Leatherface is still alive, or maybe this is when she dies. Who knows? But also, I guess there are some timeline mess-ups things if she does in fact die in this one, but, you know, all of that whole thing. But, scratch all of that because apparently the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 is a direct sequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974, meaning everything that happened in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, 3, 4, The Next Generation is all completely irrelevant. But I thought it was still cool to take a look back at all of that in the previous films in her past film appearances all the way up until now. I've been editing this video and can't believe I missed this huge detail. So apparently Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D or Texas Chainsaw 3D is a direct sequel to the 1974 movie and in the opening of that movie or that like you know the movie when the police and locals come into the scene or onto the scene of the Sawyer's house to obviously demand for Leatherface this is actually after Sally must have ridden into town with her savior, the guy who picked her up in the car or the pickup truck after the original movie, to alert the police and the locals of what happened to her, her brother, and her friends. So the townspeople and the police must have loaded up and headed towards the Sawyer's house, and before any deals could really be made or justice could be had, the locals apparently took it upon themselves to basically firebomb the place or the Sawyer's house against the sheriff's wishes, killing all the Sawyers, but not Leatherface. Meaning, after the end of the 1974 for movie when Sally got away Leatherface rushed home and some more Sawyer showed up to help defend against the police and like you know the locals and defend their home that this is where they were basically all killed but good old Leatherface also in a scene later in the movie when the main protagonist Heather is looking through some old police files newspapers reports etc she spots an article with a picture of Sally Hardesty that reads out one escaped he chainsawed my paraplegic brother referring to her paraplegic brother Franklin that was killed in a very, very terrifying scene in the original. And it does mention a little bit off to the side that she was shocked and saddened as she, as the police questioned her outside, which it does get cut off a little bit under, but I'm assuming it mentions station, most likely meaning towards like, you know, a police station or less likely maybe a gas station or anything else since it makes sense that they'd go right to the police in the first place. There's some other writing on the articles, but it's very hard to make out since it's all very, very, very blurry, but I feel sad with what we've discovered and what we have now going into the next chapter. Although there is another section that does mention four young adults butchered on the property or the Sawyer's property that was turned into a slaughterhouse, which is most likely referring to like, you know, Sally's friends, Sally Hardesty's friends and her brother Franklin. Last but not least, apparently late Marilyn Burns did make a cameo in the movie Texas Chainsaw 3D as one of the elder Sawyers and not Sally. And apparently the actor who played the original 
1974, Leatherface has a cameo too as one of the Sawyers in the opening, but also Sally's 1974 on-screen brother Franklin also has a cameo playing a fa the facility worker who rolls Sally away in Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation, which is insane to think that they share the screen again even if it was for like a brief minute but again i do want to disclose that these movies texas chainsaw massacre 2 3 the next generation and 3d do not fit into the currently established timeline that the 2022 sequel has set up or is about to set up or is setting up it basically goes the texas chainsaw massacre 1974 and now the texas chainsaw massacre 2022 or too. Just wanted to add that in since I just learned about this while I was originally rendering out the video and it didn't feel right leaving it out. So if the sequel ignores all of that after the original, then what happened to Sally Hardesty after Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974? Now, let's take a look back at some possible theories. So, Sally hops into some random stranger's truck after being chased by a huge psychopath with a huge chainsaw. And the person driving the truck did, in fact, see all of this, meaning that she does have a witness to help her side of the story. That this nightmare does, in fact, exist and is real and is not some mental thing that she cracked to so that could have prevented her from getting thrown into a mental institution or a healthcare facility since she did have someone to back up her story unless the person driving was so scared of sally since she was going absolutely bananas with her flipping out that the person dumped her out of the car to which she was found by someone else and either aided her or got her locked away into a mental facility or the person driving it did in fact help her to get to safety to which she was helped and aided back to health but you know definitely 110% in fact scarred forever which that last theory on her being helped and brought back to safety is most likely the one that's the most true mainly because if we fast forward in time to now the current day material what better place to go than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 or 2 official trailer first we get a shot inside Miss Hardesty's home I'm assuming and we first spot a newspaper article that reads out Middle Texas Independent obviously most likely the distributor or or creator of the newspaper obviously and only survivor of chainsaw massacre tells her story the other two pieces of text mention a debate between two congressional peoples and the other talks about a testimony resuming a case against a local which could mean one of three or four things a case against sally it may be people thinking that she killed her friends or they simply just don't want her around the town or the texas area a case against leatherface or his family since there are technically locals in texas obviously a case against some other character in the film or a case against someone random who knows just just all theories at the moment but if we take it back up to the article talking about how she spoke out about her survival based on the way it's written it seems like she was taken seriously meaning in this universe she most likely wasn't thrown into some nut house or mental institution and did actually receive help from people and she did actually get her story out there for people to hear about her survival and what happened and what happened unfortunately happened to her friends people also probably believe them and her more since locals and others probably thought the sawyers were a bit weird and messed up in the first place and sally did have her getaway driver to vouch for her so there's that we also see that the paper is from texas and that sally saved the paper or the newspaper most likely meaning that she stayed in texas which also is helped by the fact that she does mention that she's waited years to be able to see leatherface again and waited years and years to finally meet him and see him again to to finally most likely kill him so i doubt she'd leave even with all that vengeance that she has flowing through her veins then to the left of that we see another article that reads out more bodies discovered on slaughter property most likely referring to sally's friends being found or more of sally's friends being found or maybe just maybe our new protagonist or the people in their town or maybe sally just keeping up with the local news and leatherface has been killing for years even after sally and her friends you know their whole situation which is pretty unlikely since as soon as she heard that he was back she mostly would have loaded up and went on after for after him under that we see maybe maybe a leatherface sighting i don't know the picture is very very blurry but it could be that a cop maybe or just another newspaper photo way over by the right we see maybe the truck from the end of the 1974 film although the colors look a bit off it, so it could be a tractor but their picture is just so damn blurry that's very hard to tell but I'm telling you by the picture next to it being a tank 
think maybe Stanley's been doing some scouting on the Leatherface locations or Leatherface locations or maybe the Sawyer farm or the Sawyer home. Who knows? But we definitely know that she's up to something with all these pictures being pinned around her place. Last but not least in the top right, I think this is the Sawyer's house. It's very hard to tell. There's so many other things in the shot, but a lot of it is pretty blurred out. But best we can tell is that she's been keeping up with Leatherface news, doing some detective work to maybe figure out some things with him or like, you know, maybe possibly find him or link some things to him and was helped fully after the end of the first 1974 film. In the next shot, we do hear her being called by her last name by a woman, which does sound like it's most likely in person. This is hard, Steve. And a man in the next shot calling her by her first name and calling her to alert her that Leatherface is back. Sally? I'm afraid your old friend's back. Most likely meaning that she is known by locals, but what if the man calling her in the second shot is the man that saved her at the end of the first movie? But that's just a theory at the moment. That's a really, really long stretch of a theory. But this does show that she is very well known around the area, around Texas, or maybe around the town, or she does have some new friends. We also see behind her some hanging and cut pigs or maybe cattle, I, I can't tell. But this does mean that she either bought a slaughterhouse or farm, no clue why'd she do that. Or is doing some investigative work, which most likely is the answer that makes the most sense, at least. But I still do believe that she has a place in the mid-Texas or Texas area to keep close just in case Leatherface does come back. Next, she is seen in a pretty big car with cages dividing the back from the front. Maybe just in case she captures Leatherface to maybe capture him alive and bring him into the station. I, I don't know. Or to definitely, like, you know, capture him and maybe not have him harm her in any way. Although, I think she would just shoot him right fucking away. Unless she just wants to torture him like maybe Andy Barkley did and I think Curse of Chucky or the end no, of Curse of Chucky, but I'm Cult of Chucky too. But tell me about this car, it could mean that she possibly becomes a sheriff or an officer. I mean, we never see a sheriff or an officer in the first film, but telling by some other films like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2013, there are some corrupt and insane police officers in the area that are obviously a part of the Sawyer family, of course. But insane and deranged and psychotic insane police officers in the area, so maybe she joins the force to actually protect and serve the area, and uh, have access to a lot of guns, but telling by past films, it seems like they're just handing them out to anyone at this point. We're here to back you up. Yeah, you can start by getting everybody back in their cars and hightailing it out of here. No. <laughs> uh, or she didn't join the force at all, and this is just her car, just a normal car, that she obviously customized for her purposes. I mean, there's nothing wrong for, of like, you know, with that at all. I mean, hell, today, with, if you're an Uber driver, you definitely need this shit. But she ends up pulling down a photo of her and her old friends, aka the gang from the first film back in 1974, showing she has not forgotten about them and sure as shit wants to avenge them, which is also a very nice nod back to the original gang of the first film that I really, really like to see in this trailer. And obviously that we will see in the film. We do get to see her loaded duffel bag of guns into the back of the car most likely meaning that she's going out on like you know a leather face hunt telling by the next shot which we do see her in like you know the same like a very similar hat to the one that is in the shot of her loading up the duffel bag of the guns and she seems to be in the same outfit looking through a cornfield a pretty distraught driven through cornfield which she most likely might be looking at the girl in the beginning of the trailer to this film or that like you know crashed into something although not a hundred percent sure but it does seem to make sense since that girl did drive through a cornfield at least I think now remembering to the trailer so she might just be going for a lead right now to just look for Leatherface possibly but it does show nonetheless that she's gone off for a hunt to maybe watch out for him or maybe this is just a scene in the movie and they're just out looking for him like I said most likely the scene where she does find the girl smashed in and like you know in the cornfields and I think obviously murdered by Leatherface telling by the, by the beginning of the trailer but if we take it back to that shot I'm assuming this is her house that she does own in the Texas area for some reason I did think I did think it was a Sawyer house which would be fucked up that she bought the house of the person that murdered her entire fucking fr like group of friends but i doubt that it is the sawyer house but it might be the house from the photos we saw earlier on her whole pin of like you know walls and leatherface research or maybe it's just another article on sally or maybe 
the photo of the Sawyer's house. Maybe it is a photo of the Sawyer's house. Who knows? But in a few final shots, we do get to hear that it has been 50 years since she last saw Leatherface and Sally last saw Leatherface and 50 years since he took the lives of all of her friends and obviously her brother and how long she's been waiting to see him and avenge her friends slash kill him and finally put a stop to his madness once and for all. And that is all. There's some other really cool shots of her in action in the trailer, but I don't really give evidence to what happened to her after the 1974 film or movie. Still really cool shots though, but I am very excited for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that drops in literally just a few days. And if this does go up in time, which... If it does, I would like to do an updated video after the movie does come out. If we do learn some new facts about what happened to her after the 1974 film, which I'm sure we will. But that was all from me. What do you think happened to Sally Hardesty after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974? And will you be watching the new movie slash film this Friday? And how hyped are you? Because I'm definitely very excited for it. Be sure to stick around for an updated video after the film slash movie drops and a review, obviously. Comment down below your theories and your findings about the topic in general because i would definitely love to hear them obviously and make sure to comment down below who you would like to see and learn about next on my horror what happened after series that's been all from me see you all later peace on my amigos and peace out